Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the using static routes with the CLI Learning Byte. All right, so here's our example. In this example, we have a few different devices I want to talk about. First, we have VSRX1 and then VSRX2. Now, VSRX1 and VSRX2 are connected together through the Gigi001 interface. And then VSRX1 is connected to the internet and also connected to the user with the interfaces shown on the screen. And then VSRX2 is then connected to the email server. And the other thing I want to point out is on the internet, we have an internet server. We are just using the 8.8.8.8 publicly accessible IP address. And so with the criteria for the example, what we want to do is we want to configure static routes on VSRX1 and VSRX2 in the CLI. Now, something I do want to point out here is this is going to be a generic configuration for any Junos device as far as configuring static routes in the CLI goes. This isn't specific to SRX or anything like that, but I'm just using SRX for that because that's what I have handy. Okay, so with that, we want to be able to reach hosts on the internet. So we are going to need to configure static routing on VSRX1 and VSRX2 to facilitate routing for traffic coming from the user and also the email server. So we'll need to have them be able to reach the internet. And we'll do that just by pinging that server on the internet. Then user one needs to communicate with the email server. And so what we need to do there is we need to configure some static routing for that on VSRX1 to allow user one to get to the email server. And then we need to configure some static routing on VSRX2 for the return traffic that's coming from the email server to get to the user. And with that, one last thing to note, this is SRX, like what we talked about earlier that we will be configuring. I've already configured the security policies and zones, so there's no need to worry about configuring anything security related with this learning byte. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, here is the CLI for SRX1. We do a show route, and we can see here that we only have local and direct routes in the inet.0 table. And so that means we need to configure some static routing. So to begin, let's jump into configuration mode and then go to the routing options, static hierarchy, and then we need to configure some static routes. So we can look in here, there's nothing configured. Set route 0 slash 0. So this will be the default route that allows everything to access the internet host and other things on the internet as well. Specify next hop. And we need to specify a 172.31.1.2. That's going to be the next hop that goes towards the internet router that's on the internet in that cloud. Then the next static route we need to set is we need to set a static route for the subnet for the email server. And something else we could do here is we could set a slash 32 route. So it's a route that is just for the IP address of the email server, but that's unnecessary. There might be some other hosts in the future on that subnet that we want some reachability to. So let's configure this as a slash 24 subnet with the static route. And we need to configure the next top address, which is 10.5.5.1. Now that's the IP address that is on the VSRX2 interface that VSRX1 is directly connected to. And those are the two static routes we need to configure on VSRX1. Let's go ahead and commit that configuration. And let's look at the routing table. And here we can specify a protocol of static. So we don't have to look at all the other routes. And we can see here that we have two static routes. A default route, which is all zeros. That points towards the 172.31.1.2 next hop, which goes out the Gigi000 interface and also the 172.291.0 slash 24 static route, which points towards the 10.5.5.1 IP address, and that goes out the Gigi001 interface. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to VSRX2 and configure the static routing that we need to configure there. So here is VSRX2, jump into configuration mode, jump into edit routing options, static. And before we do that, let's take a look at the routing table. And it's the same thing we saw with VSRX1. There are no static routes, only direct and local routes. So this means that the email server or even VSRX2 can't reach anything on the internet or anything outside its local subnets. So with that, let's first configure a default route. We need to specify the interface IP address of the Gigi001 interface of VSRX1 for the next hop. And then we need to set a route 
for the user subnet. And again, we could, to satisfy the criteria of this learning byte, just set it to the actual IP address itself, a slash 32 for that host, the user host that is. But here, again, there might be other hosts in the future, so it's probably best practice to just set this to the subnet when using static routing like this. Specify the next hop, and the next hop is going to be the same, 254, because that's the only way to really get out. And so one thing I do want to point out here is you look at these two different static routes. What are these static routes actually doing? Are they doing the same thing? The first static route is routing all traffic out the GIGI001 interface towards the 10.5.5.254 address. And the next route is routing user traffic out that same interface using the next hop of 10.5.5.254. That more specific route is actually completely unnecessary in this scenario. Now, there might be certain scenarios where it might be necessary, but in this scenario, it's completely unnecessary. So let's go ahead and delete that route. There's no need for it. So we can see here, we only have the one default static route configured. That's all we need. Let's go ahead and commit the configuration. Let's look at the route table. Let's just look at the static routes. We see we have one static route, and that's that default static route. And that's exactly what we need. It's using the GIGI001 interface, and it's going to the 10.5.5.254 IP address. So let's go ahead and jump to the virtual router device, which has a couple different routing instances that represent the user and the email server, and then test to make sure this works. So here is the virtual router device. Again, this is split up into multiple different routing instances or virtual routers that represent the user and email server. So first, let's try to ping that internet address using the user routing instance or virtual router. And we can ping it. That's exactly what we want to see. Perfect. So let's then see if we can ping the internet device using the email server. Again, we can ping it. That's perfect. We have communication. Okay, the next thing we need to check is to make sure we can ping the email server, which is 172.29.1.100, from the user device. And great, everything works perfect there. Now I'm going to leave that ping running because since this is VSREX, we can look at the flow table and look at a few more things there. All right, so we can see here that we have ICMP traffic coming in the GIGI002 interface and going out the GIGI001 interface. And if we jump to VSREX2, we can see something similar. And you can see that traffic is coming in the GIGI001 interface and going out the GIGI000 interface. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. We demonstrated how to configure static routes using the CLI in this learning byte, as well as we verified those static routes and the functionality of those static routes using the CLI. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.